Before we add a theme to our website, let's talk a little bit about the differences in available themes. There are sort of four levels of complexity in terms of themes. What we've seen so far, I guess if we could call level zero, which is not having any theme at all. We basically get plain HTML rendered on a white page. There are also 12, I call them canned themes, which are the basic themes that are built into GitHub pages. If we find one of those, that's fine, but most people want something more special than one of the 12 canned themes. So we'll practice with this, but probably you'll want to get something better. And the way to do that is to choose a remote theme. There are some free remote themes. There are also some that you have to pay for, but there's a lot of good free options. There are actually two ways to run a remote theme. One is where the only thing that you have locally on your GitHub Pages site is the content, and all the theme styling is maintained remotely. The other option, which is typical for more complicated websites, is for you to fork the entire theme repository and add your content to that. So we'll see how to use each of these other three kinds of themes that are better than having no theme at all. The simplest way to choose one of the canned themes is to do it from the settings page. All you have to do is click on the choose a theme button and you will see the 12 possible themes that you can select. Let's find one that we like. Let's try modernist. That looks interesting. I'll click on select theme. What has actually happened is that GitHub Pages has added a configuration file to the website that indicates the theme that we have chosen. If we go to the code, we should be able to see in the docs folder that it has created a file called config.yaml. The config.yaml file is a very important file in the website because it lays out the basic configuration of the entire website. It uses YAML, which stands for something weird like YAML ain't markup language. Anyway, it's a simple way of describing configurations by key value pairs you have a key that describes what the setting is and then the value of that setting. Not only is the theme that you've chosen configured in this file, but also other important information like the website title, what language it is, and so forth. There also may be YAML at the top of individual pages depending on the theme you've chosen, and that YAML can control page-specific formatting. In order to understand how to use config.yaml, you usually have to go to the README page of the theme, and that will tell you the details of what is customizable. I said that typically we don't pull things down from GitHub. We usually only push when we're using GitHub pages, but in this particular case, we would like to retrieve the config.yaml file because it was created by GitHub itself. So I'll pull that change down, and then I see that config.yaml was created with Jekyll theme modernist as the theme. By now, enough time should have elapsed that if I go back to the website and refresh it, I should see the theme being applied. It's a little bit fancier, not a lot fancier, but you can see the styling that has been added by applying the theme. If I want to know more about what can be configured on the website, I can go back to the place where I selected the theme I will just open this up, and here's some information about the theme and how to use it. Here gives me some information about customization variables, changing the style, and so forth. I can see two things that I can add to my site, a title and a description. I'll just copy that. I'll open config.yaml and add the two lines. I'll go ahead and save this and push the changes up to GitHub. Now let's see what effect that had. I'll refresh the page. Looks like it's not quite ready yet, so we'll wait a minute and try refreshing again. Ah, 
Now I see that it has included the website title and the website description.